and Delta 10-6-3 has had an engine failure on the right engine, declaring an emergency due to a bird strike. Delta plane was forced to make an emergency landing at JFK Thursday afternoon after bird slammed into its right engine. This video was taken on board Delta 1063. A few moments before takeoff, while the plane was between 800 and 1,000 feet in the air, According to the Federal Aviation Administration, there have been nearly 2,600 bird strikes at JFK Airport since 1990. Well, the science has progressed uh, without any question. We have more experimental data on animals. Unfortunately, we have more data on people. Cryptochromes are a biological molecule called a protein. They were discovered in the 1990s in plants where their function is to absorb blue light uh, which is used to regulate growth. They were since been found in insects, animals, mammals, including humans, and in birds. It's generated by some of your genes, called cry genes, and the cryptochrome molecule actually controls your circadian rhythms, including melatonin production. Some of the cryptochromes seem to have a function of absorbing light uh, as detectors for the circadian clock. So they are inputs for the light-dark cycle uh, that many species seem to have. In the year 2000, Thorsten Ritz demonstrated an even more amazing role for the cryptochrome. In a series of experiments on robins, he demonstrated that their navigational sense was not only a magnetic one, but it came directly from the cryptochrome cells, which are located behind the eye. This research, which shows that the kestrel melatonin levels fall with exposure, that white storks nesting on buildings near to radio masts have lowered progeny compared with uh, stork nests a long way away from radio masts, studies on ants, studies on bees, and studies on birds of various kinds, studies on marine mammals, all point in the same direction. Among the recent research, a $25 million study on rats by the U.S. government, the largest they've ever done. The findings were released just last year. It was set up to answer the question whether or not there was any effect on health from low levels of radiation like those from cell phones. The scientists running the study thought it would find nothing. They were astonished when they showed this increase in highly malignant, aggressive tumors of the brain and the heart. Astonished because some rats were exposed to radiation levels below the safety limit that cell phones have to meet. The findings were deemed so important, those heading it wasted no time letting the regulators know. Canada was looped in too. I think the Ritz paper published in 2000 is one of those milestones in science. Because he proposed that this cryptochrome molecule, which remember is best known for its effect in controlling circadian rhythms, that that molecule was actually responsible for giving the compass, magnetic compass information in birds. The birds literally see the Earth's magnetic field, perhaps as a bright or a dark spot superimposed on their field of vision. And as they then move their head or their body around, this spot moves, and so rather like a heads-up display for a fighter pilot, they have this thing that they see, goodness knows what it would be, uh, which allows them to orient uh, while they're flying. The way he tested that was to expose birds to radio frequency fields to see if it actually disturbed their magnetic compass. And not only did the radio frequency field indeed disrupt the uh, migration of robins, but it did so at very, very low intensities of fields. And that, that's really important and really interesting, that very low level radio frequency fields interfered with, this, with, with the Robin's compass. Frank Clegg's the former president of Microsoft Canada. Now he heads a group advocating for safer use of technology. 
Over 200 studies were submitted by Clegg's group, research on humans and animals, suggesting potential harm, everything from behavior changes to DNA damage and sperm abnormalities, all at radiation levels below what phones are tested for. All of the animal navigation studies, the um, cockroaches, the zebra finches, the chickens, the robins, they've all had their magnetic compass disturbed by radio frequency fields well below the ICNERP public exposure limit. I specialised in microwave warfare. Uh, radar, obviously, which uses microwave, but they don't just teach you radar, they teach you all about microwaves and other uses. So I understood about microwave warfare and how it can damage people, how it can harm people. And we already see this in animals that have reproductive cycles of a year or two years or three years. We're already seeing this and it has been published by veterinary schools and vets and scientists, so we know this happens. If mankind has the ability to sense magnetic fields, the same ability as the bees, the birds and the butterflies, does that also mean that we are as vulnerable as they are to man-made frequencies? Will changes in our environment affect us, as it's clearly affecting them? You never know where you might see one next. On Monday morning, police chased another coyote through the streets of Queens. That makes sighting number seven this year in New York City. On Saturday, this little guy was captured after cops caught him roaming the streets of Battery Park. And earlier last week, NYPD launched a full-on search, chopper included, after another was spotted on the Upper West Side. We first spotted the big cat from above as it darted across the quad at Kennedy High School during the noon hour. It then hopped on a wall, hung out for a bit, and then jumped down into the neighborhood. Clegg was told many don't meet Health Canada's bar. He wants to know why. I think they're not. They're looking for any excuse they can find to uh, continue with the status quo. 